Hey, Bog, do you want to do a bait review? Bait review with Bog? Yes, bait reviews. There are literally three rigs I have tied up from right now, January, until we hit summer. And, and I'll probably throw them in summer too. It's three baits that, that totally catch them, but that's not exactly what this is about. This is a Bog and I, or me and Bog, bait review. Got a new chatterbait trailer. Uh, Gambler came out with it. It's super cool. I want to tell you why I think it's cool. It, just some aspects about it, and I'll do kind of a rundown. I guess you want to know those three baits. Well, stay tuned. I, I'll tell. I'll tell all. It's it's a balls tell all. Stay tuned. I think you'll like this video. So we'll start with the brass tacks. What are the three things I always have tied on for the next? I mean, dude, it's really like the next like six months, and that's a trap. It might not be a red trap. A chatterbait. And some kind of punch rig, whether it's for punching mats down here in Florida. By the way, we're in Florida. Uh, stay tuned. Mikey caught his PB, and can you say teener? Yeah, video video coming soon on that. I gotta edit it. It was an amazing day. Oh yeah, 40 plus pounds with a shot at 50. Yeah, stay tuned. That's dude, it was insane. I can't wait to share it with you guys. It's one of the craziest 90 minute periods of fishing I've ever had in my life but that's not what this video is about this is about kind of the three rigs and then this new trailer right here this is actually the komodo i got it on a jackhammer right here let me pull her out but that is the komodo it's the new gambler chatterbait trailer and actually it's not just a chatterbait trailer we'll talk about that in a minute but it's also kind of a flipping or a punching glide style bait not a glide bait in the sense of thinking of like a glide swim bait but a glide style punching and flipping bait which we'll talk about but let's break down i'm so let's be totally honest i love throwing a chatterbait with a few things on it an easy like a little easy something along those lines that's been kind of my juice um, even down in florida i like going with the smaller one because oftentimes i'm throwing a chatterbait like when it's a little colder when it's a little breezy and they're, they're not as like committing to a bait i love that but it displaces more water i guess you could say my real love like originally back in like 2012 2011 when i started throwing a chatterbait on like okeechobee my real love is putting a fluke on the back or a super gambler super stud it's kind of a generic bait you know everybody makes a different version but that fluke or that super stud it it doesn't really do much to the bait and it responds a bunch to the bait's action a chatterbait i look at kind of as a, a four-wheel drive crankbait that doesn't go down it rises and it, and it has that shimmy, that back and forth. You feel it in the rod tip when you're actually fishing it. And that fluke, it just has that straight tail and it just swims back and forth. It doesn't push a bunch of water. It doesn't, you know, make the bait run all crazy. It actually makes it, it hunt a little bit because it glides off from time to time. But that's always been kind of my go-to trailer is, is a fluke. It's A fluke is awesome for ripping it. And I think it really comes down to the fact that it's, it's straight. It doesn't have a boot tail. It doesn't have kicker legs like a burner craw or some of those kicking craws. Like it's straight and it uses the action of the bait to impart action onto the trailer. And that's kind of what this does. So the concept with it was to create like kind of a, a, a streamlined plastic, but do something. It's kind of that tall profile. You can see it's got a hook slot in there. I guess we're getting into the review. Let, let's just do the review. The Komodo. There she is. It's, it's really like a ribbed style bait, I guess you could say. It has a straight body to it. It's kind of tall, kind of, it has kind of a beaver-esque kind of form to it. And that's one of the cool things. You actually put it onto the chatterbait standing up. Um, there's a hook slot imparted. Maybe this one will show it a little bit better, but there's a hook slot in there because one of the biggest problems with a lot of baits that you put in that, that tall kind of format is they eat up some of the bite on the hook. So in this case, it kind of folds down or breaks down right where that that hook comes out so you're not going to miss as many fish because there's not as much bulk on the plastic but going back to the fluke thing what i really like is that this thing is straight it comes down to a taper right there and then shoots back out and what happens is the water hits this bait goes around it and hits that little that bulbous thing right there 
and you get, I got some underwater footage I'll kind of thread into the video, you get this, this subtle shake back and forth. And part of it is the blade of the chatterbait. As we talked about, it's kind of like a square bill, like in a sense. So that blade is going back and forth, creating kind of a side to side horizontal movement with that chatterbait. And it's shaking that tail in the process. And then the water is also shaking that tail and making for a super tight wobble. I like a tight wobble on my chatterbaits. Unless we're in like, say, mid to late spring or especially summer that's when i start putting that little easy on a lot more or even going up to an easy swimmer like a big paddle tail style kind of boot tail swim bait when it's displacing a bunch of water you want it just like ripping and darting all over the place but until then when the water is a little bit chillier i really want more of a subtle kind of look to my trailer now you'll notice too this thing isn't tiny but it's not large and that's the other thing that i like I personally don't think you want anything longer than maybe like four and a half inches or so on the back of your, your chatterbait, just because you don't really put a trailer hook on it. You can't like a spinnerbait. Um, and that, if you put too much on these things, basically what happens is they rise too much and it also takes away like too much plastic. It takes away from the blade action and you can actually just sort of, I guess you call it like numb the the original action of the chatterbait and that's something you don't want to happen you want the thing and you want it to start easy that's one reason why that's a jackhammer it's one reason why a lot of people like the jackhammer is because the blade starts very easily when you when you start reeling but a lot of that has to do with the amount of plastic or the size of trailer that you put on the back if you put too bulky of a trailer it's hard to get that chatterbait going because it has to drag that trailer along with it in order to kind of put pressure on that blade this is pretty streamlined I think my favorite part about it is that it does mimic that fluke. Everything this blade does, this tail does. So if you rip it, this thing darts, this tail just but it always keeps kind of a tight kind of performance. And that's what I always liked about the fluke. It wasn't too much. I really felt like a lot of, especially a lot of guys catch them on the, on like a crawl like say like a uh, what do you call it a burner crawl or like a zoom ultra vibe or something like that a lot of guys put those on there i personally felt like it took away from the action of the chatterbait and sometimes it inhibited the action of the chatterbait so i've always been more of like a straight streamlined kind of guy and that's what you're getting with this. I love ribbed baits, anything with ridges in that because it subtly moves water without moving a ton. And then you also get very subtle vibrations in the bait as it works. So that's the Komodo. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I got black and blue. There's white lightning right here. Um, it also comes, so I've been learning, if you guys watched, I think it was like the last video, um, that I forget what it's called even, but there's like a, a crawl red or something chatterbait that's super hot by Z-Man. And that red color has just been hot, especially on Gunnersville and lakes in the Southeast. But it's something that kind of originated in Texas and moved around. Whatever the reason for it is, they chew it. But Gambler made um, a red one. I think it's, it's some kind of swirl. I think it's like uh, red hot swirl um, and it matches up perfectly with that, that Z-Man, um, that evergreen uh, jackhammer. It's got kind of like a red orange look to it. They chew it. I don't know why, because frankly, it looks obnoxious, dude. It looks like an orange slushy shake thing that's crazy with some red in it. I, I have no idea, but they do chew it. Um, that's another color. There's of course green pumpkin, great for mimicking brim. Um, and then there's also a color, I think I might actually still have one. Or did I rip it up? There's a ghost shad swirl. Oh, here it is. There's a ghost shad swirl. This one's kind of tore up, but it's basically like a transparent plastic with some smoke in it, as well as blue and some gold fleck. It's super sweet. It, it chatterbaits a weird deal because it is kind of like an obnoxious, like big old hard bait, but it works really well in clear water for some reason. Like it, when you rip it out of the grass and that, uh, they really react to it. Maybe it's because it has those square bill aspects to it. But if you're looking for, oftentimes you look for a trailer or even a skirt that has some transparent qualities to it. Um, this guy is practically see-through. You can kind of see it in the light. The sun's going down, so it's a little hard to see. But sometimes those transparent colors, when you really, you want a trailer on there for castability as well as water displacement and action, but you really don't want the trailer there, if you kind of know what I'm saying. It's kind of the same concept of throwing a transparent jerk bait. You want the movement, you want the water displacement, but you don't want much there from a visual standpoint. You want them to strike at that action. That's when I'd put this joker on. 
But the wild card. So this is the thing that I don't think there's any videos on or that hasn't been talked about. You guys know I love to flip. Oh, ah, quick thing. You can put it on a uh, swim jig and it'll do the same thing. With that bulbous tail like that, it actually swims when you put it behind a swim jig and slow roll it. So it'll just subtly kind of kick back and forth. Super subtle trailer, add some bulk to the to the swim jig and that. It's, I don't know, I think that's kind of cool. The other thing is putting it on like a football jig. If you guys go back quite a few videos, um, back in summer on Pickwick, um, I got into some, some stroking, jig stroking fish and I'm going to do this with this. You put it on the back of a football jig and it'll impart when you stroke that jig, you basically snap up that slack line. It's gonna cause that jig to dart all over the place, but it's gonna have a very subtle kind of shad or bait-like fall to it as, it as it wiggles downward. But that's a perfect transition point for what we're gonna talk about now. A lot of times in, in flipping and punching, as you guys probably remember, I got one tied on right here. That's a BB Cricket. When you have cold water situations or when you're going to spring maybe with a cold front in Florida when the fish are in the mats, I don't want that much action on the bait that I'm putting into that heavy cover. I want it to be super streamlined and just maybe like like on the cricket, I think I think these appendages just shake a little. They don't really kick any water. They don't do anything. They're not swimming appendages, I guess you'd say. So sometimes when you're flipping and you want kind of a subtle bite or even a subtle delivery, you want something that doesn't have kickers. You want something that just shakes or vibrates. So what I'm thinking with this, and I need to try it out, there's, there's no doubt, but I'm looking at this as a punch bait or even um, a jig trailer oftentimes will pitch reeds or pitch pads um, up by Gunnersville. What is that stuff called? There, there's this lily stuff that you, that you pitch into in spring because the fish will bed around it. I forget what that stuff's called, but it's super clingy in that. So oftentimes too, when you're talking about reeds and clingy vegetation, alligator grass is a great example, gator grass. Um, th those hard kind of clingy vine things, they, they, they get grabbed when you use something that has paddles, a uh, ribbon tail worm, uh, a burner craw, anything with like kicker tails, those tails kind of wrap around those vines and you want something that's a little more like straightforward and that goes straight in super clean and won't stick to those those vines or those stalks basically. So what I'm imagining this as either a punch bait that you can pitch in and has very little action. You can pump it to the top. You guys have seen me in videos where I'm, I'm literally yo-yoing the bait for like 15, 20 times. Um, it'll be perfect for that. It's a little bit bigger, um, but it does have a streamlined presentation to get on through. But then the other thing is pitching it to reeds and sort of that emergent cover that has a lot of stalks, vines, etc., where you need a clean delivery to reduce splash, um, maybe as a jig trailer, but you don't want it grabbing the, the heavy cover you're trying to punch through. So that's where the component, what we talked about in the beginning, where it comes to like a glide bait. It's a glide style flipping or punching bait. Super streamlined, not really a kicking bait, but does have some, I guess, vibrating or shaking action caused by the tail. But check it out. I'll put links to it down at Tackle Warehouse. It's the new, it's the Gambler Komodo. Definitely primary usage though is a chatter bait. Um, it looks sick underwater. It's a super subtle shimmy, like it just kind of, I like that kind of stuff. And it depends on your preferences. You know, if you want more kick, if you want more crazy water displacement and stuff, it, it's not gonna fit what you're looking for. But if you like a subtle, tight look to your chatterbait, I think that's one of the reasons I came out with the jackhammer too. The jackhammer is a much tighter wobble chatterbait. It really catches them, especially in early to mid spring. And a lot of it has to do with a little bit smaller blade on it and that tighter wobble. And the Komodo really complements that because it's not a bulkier but it's a bigger presentation but it's that compact tight wobble and it complements that and I think that's really important because until you get water like over say 65 70 degrees they're, they're not super into a bunch of waggedy kind of stuff they, they like subtle they like tight and I think you get more bites that way and I think the the actual chatterbait behaves better and you get better action out of it but check it out i'll put links to it at tackle warehouse the komodo uh, new gambler bait if you like punching want to try some glide stuff this is it otherwise put it on the back of your jackhammer or whatever chatter bait you use that that cricket strike king thing or whatever it's called which i actually need to try a little bit but the thing is sick dude it has really cool underwater action drop in the comments box if you guys have tried it and uh, let me know what you think i think it's gonna be a big player we're going into spring the next six months are literally 
chatterbait season, dude, if there is such a thing. So check it out. Thank you guys for watching the video. Let's go say bye to Bog. Bog, what do you think of the Komodo? Do you like the Komodo? Here, is this Komodo good? Do you want one? Do you want a Komodo? Smell the Komodo. It smells like garlic. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> Bog approved. Smells like garlic and salt. Tight lines, guys. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs>